In this video, we are going to examine dependent probabilities, or probabilities of dependent events. And so, we got to start by reminding ourselves what compound probability is. And compound probability is when we have more than one event happening. So, if we have two or more events happening, what's the probability of both of those happening? And we learned about the multiplication rule for when these are independent. Now, I'm going to emphasize that it's only when they're independent. And the idea is that the probability of A and B happening, of the first thing and the second thing happening, is just the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. Or in other words, we call it the multiplication rule because we do just that. We multiply the probabilities. Now, this is all background knowledge. This, these are things that we've previously learned. And so the thing that I want us to know, though, and what we're kind of pivoting to in this video, is that this rule that the probability of A and B happening is just the products of their individual probabilities, that only works when the probabilities are independent, meaning the first event doesn't affect the second event. But So, so um, sometimes the first event happening is going to change the probability of the second event. Events like that are called dependent events, because you could say that maybe your second event depends on your first event. That's why they're called dependent. And so this idea down here, these dependent events, this is what we are focused on in this video. So the first thing I want to do before we get into the math of it is let's practice identifying independent and dependent events. So for this one, pause the video and go through these first and see if you think that these events are independent or dependent. And so first I'll read that, and so let, if we're flipping a coin and we're getting heads and then flipping it a second time and getting tails. So the first event would be the first coin flip and the second event would be the second coin flip. Well, hopefully you know that just because you got a heads the first time, you still have a 50-50 for your second coin flip. Here the first event does not affect the second event. So these events are independent. Independent. Next, what's the probability that I draw an ace out of a deck of cards? So there's your first event. But then I draw another ace out of the deck. Well, here, if I draw an ace out of the deck, that means that there's one fewer cards in the deck for my second draw. And, pro and maybe one fewer ace if I drew that out. So here, drawing the first ace out is going to reduce the number of cards for the second draw. So it is going to change the probability for the second event. So those are dependent events. Dependent. Our third one says, oops, I got two threes. It says pulling an ace out of a deck of cards and then rolling a four on a die. So this would be our first event. This would be event A and this would be event B. And here, pulling the ace out, if we're just drawing that one card out, that has nothing to do with what we roll on the die. So the, uh, number three, these would be independent. And I'm just going to abbreviate it. Now, number four, we have a bag of jelly beans. What's the probability I pull out a blue jelly bean and then pull out another blue jelly bean? Well, if you pull out that first blue jelly bean, and especially if you eat it, it's not going to be there for the second draw. So this first event of removing the jelly bean is changing the number of jelly beans in there for the second event therefore changing the probability of the second event. So that one is going to be dependent. So what you notice, and this is how a lot, the, the structure of a lot of these problems, it, two and four, a lot of your dependent events are situations where you draw an item out of, a, out of a deck of cards or out of a bag, and because you've removed that item, it's changing the probability for the second event. So that's not always the case with these, but that's a pattern that you're going to see a lot of the time. Now, Here's how we're going to tweak our multiplication rule. When the events were independent, you just multiplied them. You said the probability of your first event times the probability of the second event. But if we were to have dependent events, what you do is this. You do the probability of the first event times, and this is read as the probability of B given A. And what that means is you're calculating the probability of your second event as if the first event was a success. Um, and we're, and we're going to kind of um, explore this a little bit more in our example. So don't be too bogged down with the notation. Know that we're still going to multiply. You're just going to have to maybe think a little bit to figure out what the probability of that second event is going to be. And so what we have is we've got a bag with 15 marbles. There's five red, five green, and five blue. And it says, suppose you draw one marble out of the bag, and then you draw another marble. What's the probability of drawing a blue and then another blue, okay? So what we got to think of here, and if I wanted to use our fancy notation, we'd say the probability of A 
times the probability of B given A. In other words, what's the probability of drawing a blue? And then what's the probability of drawing a blue considering the first draw was a blue? So don't be too bogged down in that notation, but let's just figure out what these are separately. Your first event, you have your number of successes is five because there's five blue marbles, but then there's 15 total marbles. But then think about it, for your second draw, to get this second drawn, we're assuming the first one was a success. So you're assuming that you drew a blue for your first one. So now for your second draw, there's only four blues left, and there's only 14 total marbles. So from here, you can multiply straight across, and if you wanted to, you could simplify your fraction, because it's okay to leave your probability as a fraction, but if you wanted to go to a percent, that's going to be roughly, yeah, roughly 10% chance of that happening. Now, let's play the same game. we got the same situation, but what's your probability of drawing a red and then a green? Okay. So for our first event, it's, it's kind of like the previous problem. you got five reds out of 15 total. That's your number of successes, and that's your total number of outcomes. But then for your second draw, even if you drew a red out for your first draw, you still got five greens, but you only have 14 total marbles left. Okay. Hopefully you see how this problem is different than this problem. Here, you have five reds, and even if you drew one out, you still have five greens. But up here, because you're drawing a blue and then another blue, it, it kind of changed your probabilities in a different way for that second draw. So now we can multiply straight across, 25 over 210 if we multiplied. That would simplify if you wanted a simplified fraction to 5 over 42, and that's roughly 12%. And this last one, oh, looks like we got crazy here. Now we have three events. So let's look at each of the three events. And so we're going to find the probability of drawing a blue. Then we're going to look at the probability of drawing a green. And then our third event is drawing any marble that's not a red. So it looks like a blue or a green. So your probability of drawing a blue, still 5 over 15. Your probability of drawing a green, now there's only 14 marbles left, but there's still 5 green marbles. So there's your second event. And then your third event, you're doing it assuming that these first two draws were successes. So you got to think of how many... Uh, what are we dealing with? Marbles? How many marbles are left at this point? Well, there's only 13 marbles left. And then how many not red marbles are left? That means how many blue or green marbles? Where you drew one blue out here, and you drew one green out here, so it looks like you're left with eight marbles that are not red out of 13 total. And then you're just multiplying straight across with your fractions. 200 over 2730. That's equal to 20 over 273, if you cared to simplify. That's roughly... 7%. All right, here's really our last slide. So I would encourage you to maybe pause the video, work through these on your own, and then, and then hit play and see if you got them right. So this is you're playing a board game, and there are five tiles that are face down. And we know, just because we play the game, that four of the tiles on, on the face down side are green, and there's one that's red. And in this game, you lose only if you draw the red tile. So it says on this turn, you have to draw two tiles in a row. What is the probability that you don't lose this turn? Well, we got to interpret that in the context of the problem. What this is really asking us is what's the pro probability of drawing a green and then drawing another green this turn? Because it says I'm going to draw twice. Well, my first draw, there's four successes out of five total outcomes. In other words, there's four green tiles out of five total tiles. But then assuming you drew green the first time, you got to think about what is B given A? In other words, what's my second draw's probability, assuming that first draw was a success? Well, first off, there's only going to be four tiles left because we drew one of them already in our first event. And then how many greens are left? And hopefully you're saying there's three greens left. Well, if I multiply straight across, you got 12 over 20, which would simplify to three-fifths if you divided a four out of your numerator and your denominator, or 60%. So this is a pretty good scenario. you got a 60% chance of winning your game. Now let's do the next one. It says, what's the probability, or it says, suppose you draw one tile, and then your opponent draws one tile on his turn. What's the probability that he loses on his draw? So what we have to do here is we have to find the probability that we do not lose. In other words, what's the probability that we draw green, and then at the second draw, his draw is a red. So the first event, you have a four out of five chance because there's four successes out of five total outcomes. There's four green tiles out of five total tiles. But then for the second draw, which is his draw, there's now four tiles left. And even if we drew a green, that doesn't affect how many red tiles there are. There's still just one red tile. So we got four out of 20, which is one fifth or 
20%, okay? So that is it for this video. Just the main idea is being able to identify when events are dependent and then to tweak your multiplication rule as necessary. The probability of that second event will be affected by the first event. So it's going to be just a slight variance from independent events, but I think you got it.